we reviewed today, um, the 19th of July, um, the role of the meaning of affinity and how to think about receptor affinity. So affinity is just kind of the stickiness um, of the receptor. Um, the high affinity receptors, those are like the Beyonce's that get swarmed no matter I mean, if there's just a few people around and then the lower affinity receptors um, only get really um, crowded with neurotransmitter once there's a lot of neurotransmitter there. Um, so uh, we gave a sort of made up example where there's three receptors and starting with a little bit of neurotransmitter, that little bit is enough to turn on receptor two. Um, and so that means receptor two must have a very high affinity because just a little bit of neurotransmitter and then it's already stuck and uh, activated. As, the in, as you increase the amount of neurotransmitter, now more starts binding to receptor one and finally turns it on. Um, so the receptor one has a medium affinity and then in this made up example, receptor three has a low affinity because it takes a lot of neurotransmitter. Um, we then uh, uh, spent most of the class period talking about things related to ADHD. Um, we talked about um, the term monoamines and also um, uh, uh, catecholamines. So a monoamine is serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. These are neurotransmitters that have a single amino group. It's a, it's a chemical term for uh, an H3 group that's attached to it. Um, Three of the monoamines, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, have this ring structure called a catechol. Um, serotonin has a ring as well, but it's a different kind of ring. And so the dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, in addition to being monoamines, are also catecholamines. Why that's important is that, first of all, for monoamines, um, all three of the monoamines have this regulatory step that goes on, where after they're released, um, and transported back through their either norepinephrine, dopamine, or serotonin transport. There's a different transporter for each. But after the monoamines, one of them, after the neurotransmitters are sucked back into the presynaptic terminal, they're inactivated by an enzyme called monoamine oxidase. This slows down the, the, the um, additional release of that neurotransmitter. Um, for catecholamines, so this is norepinephrine, which is shown here, but also true for dopamine. Um, monoamine oxidase can break down, but there's a second enzyme in presynaptic terminals called COMT, catecholamine methyltransferase, that will also break it down, and so further regulates the amount of neurotransmitter. Um, what that means, and this is going to come back up when we talk about depression, is that monoamine oxidase inhibitors increase the amount of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, because those are all monoamines. Um, hypothetically, a COMT inhibitor would increase just norepinephrine and dopamine. Um, but where this actually becomes relevant uh, is in, um, for ADHD, is in ADHD um, genetics. So overactive alleles of COMT cause a decrease in, um, uh, means that norepinephrine and dopamine are broken down faster, which causes a decrease in norepinephrine and dopamine. Um, and that is why, in terms of ADHD treatments, um, the treatments are either dopamine transporter blockers, which are referred to as stimulants because dopamine also stimulates urges to move, or um, norepinephrine transporter blockers, which is a newer class um, that are referred to as non-stimulants um, because norepinephrine has less of a direct effect on movement urges. Um, also for ADHD, you should review the diagnostic criteria as well. Um, as a preview of some of the stuff that we're going to get into for depression, um, we also talked today about the different types of norepinephrine receptors. There are three, alpha-1, alpha-2, and beta. The beta activate G-stimulatory proteins. These G-stimulatory G proteins are exactly the same thing as what goes on in um, uh, D1 type dopamine receptors, where um, they turn on sodium channels and they also do other things. For beta receptors in particular, they create a little bit of a feeling of anxiousness and also alertness. The alpha-2 receptors activate G inhibitory proteins inside the cell. That means they open potassium channels and inhibit this cell. And then overall in the brain, activating alpha-2 receptors has a calming effect and also a focusing effect. Um, the alpha-1 receptors don't have a direct analog in dopamine receptors, although they do in serotonin, as we'll see when we talk about depression. They activate a GO protein, a G-other, um, and this doesn't is neither inhibitory nor stimulatory, but has more complicated indirect kind of cell biological effects that are not necessarily the same across all neurons, um, but 
generally speaking, even though the cellular effect is complicated, um, the feeling that one has when alpha-1 receptors become overactive is the feeling of being overwhelmed and unable to do things. That's going to come back up when we talk about depression. For now, with ADHD, we really want to focus our attention in on the alpha-2 receptors because of this calming and focusing effect that they have. Um, those are the receptors that actually, when um, COMT is overactive and norepinephrine levels drop, start to be the ones that are most immediately affected. They tend to have a low affinity. Um, and um, as a result of that, um, the uh, um, blocking the norepinephrine transporter doesn't directly fix the COMT problem, but it does ma um, make it so that no the norepinephrine that is released sticks around longer and so overall um, gives it more opportunity to bind to those alpha-2 receptors.